is restraint. It is to restrain ourselves. You know, we, we describe taqwa as fear of Allah, uh, awe of Allah, and these are our internal state of our hearts with respect to Allah. But the externality of taqwa is restraint. How do we express our taqwa to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We restrain ourselves. And the immediate restraint is obviously with eating and drinking. But the more expansive restraint is restraint in how we deal with each other and how we approach each other in our, in our kindness or in the absence of harshness. That, that, that we increase kindness in, with, in, in the way we deal with each other and we reduce, we restrain ourselves when we want to be harsh or harmful or violent. And that restraint is the essence of expressing uh, the, the, the effects of fasting, that we restrain ourselves. So, thinking about this idea of restraint, let's now look at what the Prophet ﷺ had to face. This is the first, first Ramadan, right? And the companions have been commanded to fast, and they're fasting. And then Rasulullah ﷺ is given news that Abu Sufyan is coming back with a caravan of richly laden uh, stuffs uh, that he has traded in Syria and is now coming back to Mecca. And that all of these goods are, uh, are, are, are and the trade and the profit that he has made is on the basis of the goods that the, the uh, Meccans had captured away from the Muhajirun once they left. All of their assets that they had left in Mecca had been captured by the by the, uh, the, the Quraysh. So the Prophet ﷺ immediately on hearing this sends out Talha ibn Ubaidullah and Sa'ad ibn Zayd. He sends them on a, a reconnaissance mission to find out where are they uh, coming from, what is their route. Um, but once he has sent them, he, he decides not to wait for this information to come, but he immediately gathers primarily his, uh, his uh, Muhajirun companions, the ones who have come from Mecca, and a few, uh, some of the uh, uh, com companions from Medina also join him. And they move out, they move towards what is the small, tiny village of Badr. Now, unknown to the Prophet Sallallahu from the community in, in Medina, there is a person who leaves and tells Abu Sufyan that the Prophet ﷺ is planning to ambush Abu Sufyan and capture the goods, the goods that have been essentially stolen from the Muhajirun and then used to, for, for the trade. And as soon as Abu Sufyan hears of this, right, as soon as Abu Sufyan hears of this, he sends a messenger to Quraysh telling him, <coughs> telling the Quraysh, the leaders of the Quraysh, Abu Lahab, Abu Jahal, and others, Shaybat, Rabia, 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 and others, <coughs> the leaders of the Quraysh, that I'm being attacked, come and defend me. And down to the last family, down to the last clan, except the clan of Adi, they gather together, and they immediately march toward the deen. <clears throat> this is in the month of Ramadan. Can you imagine? Can you, can, can you, all of you are fasting today. Can you imagine that the Prophet is amongst us and he says, Get up and march with me to take back what is yours. And you were fasting. Would you do it? Would you do it? This is what the companions of the Prophet were faced with. He asked them to do this. And they got up and they, they went. They followed him. And what was it that the Prophet initially asked them to do? They, he asked them to come with him and to capture these goods, these caravans, from Abu Sufyan. Stuff that belonged to the Mahajir. But when this news came to Abu Sufyan and Abu Sufyan turned and this, this, 
this interesting opportunity, if you will, turned into a much more difficult and dangerous thing for these community of believers. That is now they're facing, and they have now heard, right, because it takes a few days to, to get through this, and you have messengers going back and forth. Now they have heard there's a thousand armed individuals from Quraysh coming to fight them. Now what do you think, you put yourself in those shoes, what do you think your heart and your mind would tell you? This is not what you're prepared for. Right? This is not what you were prepared for. And so Surat al-Anfal, post the, this confrontation in, in the Battle of Badr, memorializes for the believers, for you, for us, for the ones who will receive, and for the uh, companions, the, the state of hearts and minds, and the state of the response to the Prophet's call. Right? And, and that's what we need to look at. All in the month of Ramadan. All in the month of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that as the two parties neared, uh, Surah al Anfal, Allah reveals to us a condition of how the two parties looking at each other may have felt, but particularly focusing on the Quraysh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَإِذْ زَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ أَعْمَالَهُمْ وَقَالَ لَا ظَالِبَ لَكُمُ الْيَوْمُ مِنَ النَّاسِ وَإِنِّي جَارٌ لَكُمْ فَلَمَّا تَرَأَتِ الْفِئَتَيْنِ نَكَصَ عَلَىٰ عَقِبَيْهِ وَقَالَ إِنِّي بَرِيءٌ مِّنْكُمْ إِنِّي أَرَى مَا لَا تَرَوْنَ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ شَدِيدُ الْعِقَابِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is revealing, of course, after the incident to the believers, that when the two when the, when the two groups met with each other, shaitan was encouraging the Quraysh. And what, the, what is the translation? Remember how shaitan made their actions seem good to them, that is to the Quraysh. And how he told them, no people can ever beat you today as long as I am near you. This was in the hearts and minds of the Quraysh. That they're coming armed with a thousand people and their spy who has left Medina has told Abu Sufyan who has told him that you know these people who are coming from Medina, they are 313 or so people. They're ragtag. They have no arms. They have maybe shovels. They're not prepared to deal with you. And you are a thousand people. You have a hundred camels. And a large number of horses. You're armed. And so Allah reveals that Shaitan told these people, you are not going to lose today. You're not going to lose today. Now this is Shaitan. Shaitan's Wiswas is a lie, obviously, right? But look at Shaitan's reaction that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals to us. However, when the two forces came in full view of each other, this is the ayah, Shaitan turned on his heels and he ran. And he said, I am free of you, ana bari'um minkum, right? Which is exactly what he will say on the Day of Judgment. For those who will turn to Shaitan and say, but, but you told us to do this, and he said, I'm free of you, I'm free of your actions. I simply whispered to you these things. You are the one who did what you did. I see what you don't see. What did, what did Shaitan see? What did Shaitan see? I'm afraid of Allah, and Allah is harsh in punishment. Because Shaitan is a believer, is he not? He's the ultimate believer who has failed. He's the ultimate, his kufr, his kufr is the kufr of arrogance. It's not the kufr of not recognizing Allah. In fact, he was among the companions uh, of the angels, right? In the company of the angels. But his arrogance that he was better than Adam led, he, led to his rejection of Allah. Not to the rejection that of, of the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no. But to the rejection of the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, 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 the shaitan is a believer, but one who despite his belief, rejected Allah He has no doubt about Allah. There is no doubt in shaitan's mind. And so when he sees that group of ragtag people, he sees something that the Quraysh do not see. And what he sees is the company of angels that are with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions. Something that the Quraysh could not see. Something that shaitan saw, and he turned and he left. He left them to their devices. And he didn't tell them that he's leaving them, right? So what is this, what, what is this psychological um, 
defected the shaitan, first whispered into their hearts and said, you are not going to lose today. It is impossible for you to lose, and then he leaves. And he doesn't tell them what he sees, that accompanying these 313, that, that the eye says, we can beat, but that he saw that angels had accompanied uh, these 313 believers. So this is, this is the condition. And for two days, these two parties look at each other. Right? They size, it, uh, size up each other. And they're waiting. And they're trying to figure out what is going to happen. Now, <clears throat> the minute the Prophet ﷺ recognizes that what they had set out to do had been turned by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah reveals this in Surah al -Ikhfah. by Allah's will, to a much harder test for the believers. The believers thought they would, this would be a cakewalk. They would just walk over to the uh, to Abu Sufyan's caravan that was not harmed. The uh, caravan would surrender, would, they would take the goods and tell them, this is in return for what you've stolen from us, and everything would be good, and they would come back. And these believers with the Prophet are now faced with it, an army three times, their size, far more uh, uh, armed, and now they have to deal with this. And the Prophet ﷺ, uh, he recognizes that this is Allah's will, that Allah has turned the tables as an immense test in the month of Ramadan, the first Ramadan, right, for the believers. But, but, the, but the Prophet ﷺ nevertheless turns and consults his companions. And in this is a great lesson for those who are believers that even the Prophet ﷺ, who didn't need to in this instance, uh, the ulama say in this instance, he didn't need to uh, consult the companions because he had already been given this intuition, this revelation from Jibreel ﷺ, right? that he had been told what's going to happen. But nevertheless, to strengthen the engagement of his companions, and this is a mark and, and a great lesson for those of you who are leaders of your communities. Right? You lead, you lead by involving people in the decisions that impact all of us. Leaders who are Muslims are not the ones who sit and order. They're the ones who consult and who involve. And in this process, the Prophet ﷺ empowered his companions to think independently, to be deeply committed to what the Prophet was calling them to. Not merely as Samirna wa ta'ana, which is the first aspect, which is the first phase, but then to commit with their own minds and their own creative energies and their own hearts and in their own words. Okay, and we see we see what happened when the Prophet because Abu Bakr and Umar arose in this consultation and said, No, now is the time to confront them. We have we have stayed away from that confrontation, but now is the time to confront them. And the verse uh, asking them to confront uh, these tyrants had already been revealed. And so Abu Bakr and Omar uh, say this. And one of the companions, Naqtad ibn Amr, who is from Banu Zuhra, uh, he makes this very short speech. He says, Ya Rasulullah, proceed where Allah directs you to. For we are with you. You will, we will not say, as the children of Israel said to Musa salam, go you and your Lord and fight and we will stay here. Rather, we will say, go you and your Lord and fight and we will fight with you. This is Miqdal ibn Amr. And the Prophet sallallahu is very appreciative of this statement, of a recommitment from uh, the Muhajireen. And then he looks at the Ansar, those who have come from Medina. And we know that from the second, uh, uh, Pledge of Aqaba before the Prophet ﷺ migrated, that he had asked the, uh, uh, the, the, the people from Yathrib, the people from Medina, to protect him inside the city. There had been no commitment requested or made between the Prophet and the Ansar for a commitment in this, this difficult situation. And so he looks at them. And what is the response of the Mahajiri? It is encapsulated in the response of Sa'ad. <coughs> Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad and Sa'ad says O Prophet of Allah we believe you and we bear witness to what you have granted to us and we declare in clear terms that what you have brought is the truth we give you our firm pledge of obedience and sacrifice 
We will obey you most willingly in whatever you command us. And by Allah, who has sent you with the truth, if you were to ask us to throw ourselves into the sea, we will do that most readily. And not a man of us will stay behind. Remember, Sa'd ibn Abada is, um, uh, Sa'd ibn Mu'ad is one of the leaders of Banu Abs. We do not deny the idea of encounter with the enemy. We are experienced in war and we are trustworthy in combat. We hope that Allah will show you through our hands those deeds of bravery which will please your eyes. Kindly lead us to the battle in the name of Allah. And this is the commitment. And you know, it's, it's hard for us to think of battles and, and, and these kinds of encounters where your life is in danger. But I just want you to think and reflect. Check your hearts, check your minds. What would you have done? What would you have done? Now, of course, you know, one can argue that these are people who have seen the Prophet Sallallahu They've seen him. They've interacted with him. And their ability to see, they've seen miracles performed by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi And you and I are not witnesses to those miracles. But these companions, they've seen it. So their ability to utterly give in to the Prophet Sallallahu is tremendous. Notwithstanding, the Prophet remembered you. Because he said about you that you are those who believe in his message and you have not seen him. So there is a praise he directed towards you, towards us, that is a mark of the difficulty that it takes, that you have encountered already as believers, to believe in a, in a man who you have not seen, who is living to us in our eyes. <coughs> And I pray that if we ever face a situation like this, we will arise and respond like the companions of the Prophet Allah says in Surah Al-Anfal, كما أخرجك ربك من بيتك بالحق وإن فريقا من المؤمنين لا كارهون يجادلونك في الحق بعد ما تبين كأنما يساقون إلى الموت وهم ينظرون. This is to describe that some of the believers, some of the companions, had real heart palpitations, thinking they were going for an easy job and being faced with a far more difficult thing. For it was your Lord who made you, Ya Rasulullah, venture from your home for a true purpose. That was the confrontation with the Quraysh. Though a group of the disbelievers disliked it, though a group of the believers disliked it. And they did not become disbelievers in this process. But it is, Allah is revealing to us that when you face difficulties, you are going to, you might not like it. And these were human beings, these companions, right? And there was a group of them whose hearts were shaking. And argued with you about the truth after it had been made clear, as if they were being driven towards a death they could see with their own eyes. That is, when you fear certain things, right? Death becomes a much more horrible prospect. But when you fear only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then death is simply a transition, right? Death is simply a transition. And the yaqeen of the believer, the, the belief of the believer is that your death is not coming a moment before or a moment after Allah has destined it. Right? So this removes all this doubt. And for these believers who had a little bit of a heart palpitation, this, through the conversation with the Prophet ﷺ, this doubt was removed. And this is, this is also part of what we learn in Ramadan. Right? That when you engage with Allah's words, doubts filter away. Doubts are removed. But you have to engage. And these companions engage with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi And they had doubts. But that engagement and that proper response to remove these doubts. And so they met together. And you know the story of the Battle of Badr. I'm not going to go into the details of it. But I wanted to give you the circumstances leading up to them. And 
when 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 the, the companions, the Muhajin and the Ansar, arrived, again you see an example of the Prophet empowering his 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 companions. So when Hadab Hadab ibn al uh, you know, he asked the Prophet. They came and they came to the first well of uh, of Badr and they camped. They, they they stopped the Prophet stopped them behind this this well. And Habab ibn Munzir asked, Ya Rasulullah, is this place of stopping something that Allah has commanded you to do, or is this something from your own mind? And the Prophet said, This is this is my decision. What would you what would you do? And he said, I think it would be better if we moved forward and had the wells behind us, so that the Quraysh couldn't access the wells. And the Prophet said, very good, very good idea. And he moved the whole group of 313 said that the wells were behind. And this is yet another example of the Prophet empowering his companions. Think of you, those of you who serve as leaders of the community. Do not get this idea that because you are leaders of the community, you know it all. You don't know it all. But inspire those who are part of your responsibility to contribute. And this is so important. So this is in the midst of, in the, this is in the midst of a tough month. It's the first month of Ramadan. They have not fasted the whole month before this, and they're fasting this whole month. And remember, when was the Battle of Badr? The 17th of Ramadan, on a Friday. Right? It's a Friday. It's the 17th. They've been fasting for 16 days, and they are facing this difficult, difficult situation. And so on the day of the battle, Abu uh, Jahan, who has been told already by Abu Sufyan, come back, you know, don't, don't confront them because the danger is past, our goods are safe, they're not going to attack us. But Abu Jahal, where is Abu Jahal's mind? Abu Jahal's mind has stripped. What do you mean by tripped? All those of you who are young and who were born and brought up here, you know what I mean, tripped. His mind has flipped. He is now fully focused on destroying these followers of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knows. He knows this. And he's making dua. And he's saying, Ya Allah, if this group of believers is defeated, your worship will cease. What does the Prophet teach us with this dua? That victory and success it's not because of our arms, it's because of our beliefs and our commitments to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's because of our uprightness. Allah defeated at the hands of his angels a far superior group. This, this response from Allah will come back to the believers, but the believers have to be of the quality of the believers who followed the Prophet And this is the most important lesson I can share with you. That Allah's nasr, His help, and His mercy, will be tremendous, it will be miraculous, when we have the quality of belief and the quality of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the companions express. إن الله الملائكة هم يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما الله مصلي على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذا هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وعيتاء ذي القربة وأنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون وقم الصلاة